we find ourselves floating in space on what the astronauts call the blue marble. As we explore the universe with space telescopes, like the Hubble, we find that there is far more to the universe than previously known. The vast universe is beyond one's ability to comprehend. As an example of its vast size, our nearest star is 5.88 million miles away. If we were to travel at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, it would take us 4.2 years to reach the star. As we look into the universe, we are presented with many pieces to the puzzle of life. What are the steps in putting all of the puzzle pieces of life in their right place? The decisions that we make in life will determine how the puzzle pieces fit together. Understanding the meaning of life requires one to complete the sentence, life is, then answer the questions, where will you put your relationship with others piece? Where will you put your philosophy of life piece? How will you define success or failure in life? These pieces will have a major influence on how your life's puzzle will look. Before you can put all of the pieces to the puzzle of life in the right place, you must be able to answer one question correctly. Do you believe there is a God? Your answer will determine your success in fitting the pieces together. Your facts of life scale will weigh the values that you will use in determining how your pieces of life puzzle will fit together. Will you be using man's values or biblical values? We find that there are six basic values in life. Man and the Bible only agree in one area. The Bible says in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God. Man's value says, there is no God. The Bible says in Genesis 1.1, God created heaven and earth, and we see creation. Man says, it was a big bang. The Bible says, in Genesis 1.26, man was made in the image of God. Man says, you were evolved from, you fill in the blank. The Bible says in Mark 12, 31, love others as yourself. Man says, get all you can get. Now both agree on the fifth value. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed unto man once to die. Man agrees that everyone dies. The Bible has a sixth value. God promises eternal life in John 3.16 to all who will accept God's Son, Jesus. Now it stands to reason why man's values focus on number four. Get all you can get because you only get to go around once in life, and when you're dead, you're dead. You will have to determine which set of values you will follow. Which way will the balance tip? Man's values or God's values? The decision that you make will affect the rest of your life. If you follow man's values, your pieces of the puzzle will not fit properly. Man will try different combinations, and yet there are mismatched pieces. The best they can do is to put a band-aid on their pieces to try and hold them together. Man fails to understand God's creation. 
And why is that? God tells us in 1 Corinthians 1.19, I will destroy all human plans of salvation no matter how wise they seem to be, and ignore the best ideas of man, even the most brilliant of them. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it tells us why the Bible can give us direction on how to put the pieces together. It says, The whole Bible was given to us by inspiration from God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and helps us to do what is right. Question. What do the people who believe in God and the Bible know that others do not know? They have been given the knowledge to get all of the pieces of life's puzzle to fit perfectly. There are four steps in learning how to put the pieces together. The first step is that you must become aware and acknowledge the need. Then find the resource to fulfill the need. Understand or comprehend how to use the resources and then apply the knowledge gained to fulfill the need. If you're not aware or do not see a need, then you will continue to put the pieces in the wrong places. We all come to a decision point in life, a fork in the road, so to speak. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust God completely, don't trust yourself. Put God first, and He will direct your path. Or, Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. What decision will you make? Will it be the right one? Those who have studied man's brain tell us that its function is far more complex than any computer system ever developed, and yet it weighs only three pounds. The decision-making process is motivated by his desires, will, and emotions. Our brain in today's technology is known as a CPU, Central Processing Unit, that controls our every attitude and action. We see that the first man Adam's desires and emotions overpowered his will, causing a malfunction or circuit failure in his decision-making center. In Genesis 2.17, God told Adam, Do not eat the fruit. In Genesis 3.6, it says, he ate it. He had been given all the facts for making the correct decision. Eating the fruit would make him aware of right and wrong, good and bad, and it would cause him to die. He failed to consider all the facts. We see in today's world the same malfunction in people's decision-making system. Choosing to do something that may satisfy an immediate desire or emotion and may even give temporary relief from pain. Yet the consequences will cause additional problems or pain and in the future it may even cause death. It is this malfunction of man's decision center that has caused his failure to put the pieces of life's puzzle together correctly. The Bible calls this system failure sin. The best illustration that I can give you in today's world of computers is a computer virus that takes over the operating system and then wipes the hard drive, causing total failure. Sin affects how the software in your decision center will work. It affects your mind, your will, 
and your emotion. If you're going to put all of your life puzzle pieces together correctly, you must first become aware of the sin virus. Romans 5.12 tells us that Adam's decision caused death to spread throughout the world. Everyone begins to grow old and die, for all have sinned. Then you need to acknowledge that you need to have this sin virus removed. Understand that you were born with it and you cannot fix it yourself. Do you believe that everyone grows old and will die? Ever ask the question, why? Now you know it is sin that has caused death. After you are aware and acknowledge that you need it removed, where do we find the resource that removes the sin virus from your life? In John 3.16 it says, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that anyone who believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Since the sin virus caused death, when it is removed, it restores life. It is God's Son who takes away the sin virus. The third step is comprehending or understanding what Jesus did to restore life. Romans 3.25 says, For God sent Christ Jesus to take the punishment for our sins and to end all God's anger against us. He used Christ's blood and our faith as a means of saving us from his wrath. Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood, and paid the price to remove the sin virus from our lives. Romans 5.17 goes on to say that Jesus restores life to all that will accept God's gift. What we see here is a one-for-one -one exchange. Adam caused sin and death. Jesus gives his life for the payment of sin and gives salvation to those who will believe what he did on the cross. But it does not stop there. Three days later, Jesus arose from the dead, overcoming death, and is now seated at God's right hand, as recorded in Hebrews 10.12. But Christ gave himself to God for our sins, as one sacrifice for all time, and then sat down in the place of highest honor at God's right hand. That brings us to the fourth step that of application. We must apply the knowledge that we have learned. In Romans 10.9 it says, For if you tell others with your own mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10 goes on to say, For it is by believing in his heart that a man becomes right with God, and with his mouth he tells others of his faith, confirming his salvation. All of the pieces fit perfectly. Now that I have made you aware, God is the only one who can give you the understanding and change your heart. If you're going to believe in Jesus, it means that God has chosen you to be part of those who will have eternal life. The question remains, will you acknowledge that you have the sin virus and that you understand that only Jesus can remove it? The decision you make will determine how well your puzzle pieces of life will fit together. Revelation 3.20 says, Look, I've been standing at the door and I'm constantly knocking. If anyone hear me call him and open the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. Do you hear the knock? Will you answer the door? Or will there be a piece missing in your life? It's your choice. 
If you took action and opened the door, tell someone that you invited Jesus into your heart. Do you understand the meaning of life? Life is a gift from God. How do we know? Genesis 2, 7 says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. For more information on the Christian life, visit us at www.christianvisualarts.com or view the videos on www.youtube.com slash Christian Visual Arts.